Okay, so, what is Green's theorem? Well, there are two kinds. And basically, Green's theorem is one of the fundamental theorems of vector calculus. It's, it's a huge theorem. Okay? Now, let's just look at it here. I've said here that, or I've asked the question, is there a connection between double integrals and line integrals? And yes, Green's theorem does give, give you that connection. But there's a, a lot more going on than just that connection, as we'll see. Okay? All right. So, let curly D be a simple region, and curly C be its boundary. Okay? If the components of this vector field in the plane are continuously differentiable, I guess that should be a curly D there, but you get the idea. Then, the line integral around the closed curve, C, with positive orientation, is equal to the double integral over curly D of this function here. Okay, so you can see I've, I've written the line integral a couple of different ways. But, and here we have a double integral. Okay, so what's the connection? Well, because C is a closed curve, curly C, this here is the line integral, right, around C. This here is a double integral of the scalar curl, the scalar curl of F. Okay, so here we have circulation of F. around C, and here, this is just oh, the scalar curl. And circulation have to, have to do with swirling and rotations. Green's theorem gives yet another link between circulation and curl. Okay? Now, why, why is this known as one of the fundamental theorems of vector calculus? Well, that's, that's a good question. See here, we have two integral signs and we're integrating over some two-dimensional region. Here we only have one integral sign, and we're integrating over the boundary. So you can think of this as a simple fundamental theorem on integration. Okay, of course, the fundamental theorem that you know is the following. Now, let, let's just compare for a second. Here we have one integral over a region, the interval AB. Here we have one less integral, no integrals. And we're just interested in the boundary of the interval AB. Okay? All right, there's another form of... Green's theorem, and this is known as, actually, our Gauss's divergence theorem in the plane. Okay, let's have a look at this. 
suppose, again, curly D is a, a simple region, and this time I'm going to denote the boundary by partial D, curly D, D. Now, suppose we have a unit outward pointing normal, denoted by this N hat. Uh, if F's uh, smooth enough, then... This path integral here, which we can also write as this line integral, is equal to the double integral of this function here over D. Okay, so this is a, a, a big theorem too. It's actually equivalent to the previous theorem that I showed you. So what's what's sort of the underlying idea here. Well, we used this in th this, these two integrals here when we were calculating flux. Right? We were calculating flux over a closed curve in the plane. Right? And in here, anybody recognize that? Well, it's just the divergence of F. So, also known as Gauss's Divergence Theorem in the plane. So this is just the divergence of F. And up here, this is the the flux of F over the closed curve, which is the boundary of D. Hmm, okay. All right, so like I said, these two theorems not only give a connection between line integrals and double integrals, but they also give a connection between circulation and curl and flux and divergence. Okay? And the two theorems are actually equivalent. I'll show you how that works in a minute. All right, so let's actually do a problem and see how it all works. Okay. Now this may not be in your notes, okay? So you may need to write this down. The, all the um, examples that I gave you in your notes are all worked examples. They have all the solutions there, so I'm not just going to present them in class today because I know you can read, right? Okay. Verify Green's theorem for this line integral where C is the unit circle oriented counterclockwise. Okay, so I'm going to let I denote that line integral. And what it means when they say verify Green's theorem, they mean basically compute the line integral, compute the double integral in Green's theorem, and then show that they're equal. Okay, so let's make out picture of our region. So you can see here, our region is pretty simple. It will satisfy the conditions of Green's theorem. Okay, and by, by when I say Green's theorem, I mean the first theorem that I that I presented. Okay, um, because that, that's what I'm going to use to verify this um, this uh, particular um, uh, example. Okay, so let's parameterize our curve. 
curly C. In the following way. So a natural parameterization is just cos t sine t because we've got the unit circle. But up here we've got the differentials. So I'm just going to work with x's, y's, dx's, and dy's. Okay, so we have the, the positive orientation. And now all I'm going to do is evaluate that, that line integral. Okay. So along the parameterization, dx is minus sine t dt, and dy is cos t dt. And now essentially all I'm going to do is substitute into the line integral and work things out. Okay, it's going to yield the following. So I replace x with cos t, y with sine t, dx with minus sine t dt, and y, uh, dy with cos t dt. Okay, so I can clean those up and I'll get down to something like this. Okay, so it's not too bad to integrate. You can integrate the first term directly. The second term is just a double angle formula. Okay, so if I integrate here and sub in here, I'll get something like this. Oops, two pi. Okay, so I get pi there. So I've, I've done this just the traditional way that where you would evaluate a line integral. Nothing too fancy. But now let's actually go back and employ, I'll put, I'll put this back up in a second, employ this, this part. Let's, let's actually work this out and see if we get equality. See if we get pi. Okay, so in that context, you can think of xy being your function m. You can think of x being your function n. And see that dn dx equals 1 and dm dy is going to be x. Okay, so what we do is take those derivatives, put them in here, and integrate over the region. That's all we're doing. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, 
describe our two-dimensional region D. Okay, so if I sub in for my partials, I'll get something like that. All right. Now, look at our region down here. This is so D's D's this disk. Now you would think that okay, we've got a double integral to do here. Polar coordinates would seem sensible. So let's describe the the disk in terms of polars. It's not difficult. Okay, I then make the substitution, x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, and dA, or dx dy, equals r dr d theta. Okay, so I've transferred to polar coordinates now. It's not a, a hugely difficult integration, and um, let's see where it takes us. So we're going to get we're going to get something like um, r squared, oops, r minus r squared cos theta d r d theta integrate, and then you'll end up with something like this. Cubed. Okay, so if you sub in r equals 1 and r equals 0, get down to something like this. Okay, now I'll, le I'll leave you to integrate that. And lo and behold, you will get pi. So this is the same answer that we got just by evaluating the line integral. So they give us the same answer. We're happy about that. So we, you know, may, may, maybe Green's theorem is, it holds in, uh, like we would want it to hold, but you know, let's, let's actually find out. Let's see. Okay, so we've got pi down here in our first method, and we've got pi in the second method as well.